to another video on my channel. I hope everyone's doing good. I hope everyone's doing well. The Chan is finally underway and boy did we put on a great fantastic show with that opening ceremony. We had Saul King, we had uh, Jeju, we had speeches, we had Nelson Mandela's grandson in the Nelson Mandela Stadium saying free Palestine. It really doesn't get much bigger and better than that but what a spectacle. The fireworks in Baraki were fantastic and I've got to say when Belmadi's side finally used that stadium that's going to be one hell of a fortress. The actual pitch is huge something we're not used to. Bleed is smaller than that. Um, it's quite big it's like the 5th July stadium but the stadium mashallah it is beautiful it's bloody brilliant. So uh, loving the brand new Baraki stadium um, in Algeria. I wonder who's going to use it when the, uh, the national team don't play there. Anyway that's a debate for another day. Let's focus on this Chan. So brilliant opening ceremony, fireworks, fantastic. Um, remember, we're trying to win this bid to host the Africa Cup of Nations in 2025. And that decision is less than one month away from now. In front of the CAF president, in front of the FIFA president, uh, Gianni Infantino, we've certainly ticked all the boxes, I feel, um, in terms of trying to host that competition. Although uh, the Moroccans are trying to claim we don't put flights on for everyone, we do, you just don't want to get on them. So, um, but yeah, brilliant, brilliant start before the game. Stadium was full as ever with our Algerian football matches. Even at the Mediterranean Games, this happened. We're selling out tickets for, for competitions, 40, 50, 60,000 seaters. They're not even main, it's not bloody AFCONs or World Cup qualifiers or even friendlies. These are like the B team, the local team, the under 18. We'll, we've got the best fans in the world, mate. I'm telling you now. We've got the best fans in the world. So, Majid Bouguera's boys back in action. Their first tournament since lifting the FIFA Arab Cup. We're trying to do the free P. We won the AFCON, won the Arab Cup. Now trying to win the African Nations Championship as well. If we win all those in the space of three, four years, that's quite some, some trophy cabinet. Need that Algerian uh, winning mentality. So, in terms of the team, Alexis Gendouz played in goal. I thought he had a very good game. A very good game. There was one save he made that was very good. I like when he come for the crosses. He comfortably caught them. When you see Rice and Bolhi come for crosses, particularly from corners, um, to promoting, you'll see him Bolhi will come and flap at them. This Gendouz guy, and he was born in France as well, by the way. He come over to play in the Algerian league. Cool, calm, collected, assured. Most certainly could have a spot in the main Algerian national team squad in the future, and kept a clean sheet in the game as well, which always which always helps. Sort of a, a four three three. A 4 2 3 1 in transition, whatever way you look, look at it. Um, Ayub Abdelawi, who I didn't like in the main national team, but that was as a left back. Not only is he captain in this, this Chan team, he's playing number five Abdelawi as a centre half at Muladia now. I've only really seen him with Algeria when he was playing in Switzerland um, in their club football. He played under Belmadi a few times at left back, didn't really work well there. But with Lawafi, who did a right at left back today, and by the way, he was on the bench against Cameroon and we chose to play bloody Yusuf Atal there. He did well, left back. Belkatir did well, right back. And then we had um, Abdelawi as one of the two centre backs. He got out jumped for one header, but overall, as a captain, I think he did all right. Of course, he's not the greatest, but he'll certainly do a job. So that's one to keep an eye on Abdelawi at centre back. Of course, Belmadi was at the game in the stands, so he'll be looking at these players and what sort of players he should be implementing in the future for the main Algerian national team as his Belmadi team come back to action in March, just before Ramadan um, begins. So that defence looks solid and you have to commend them for, for keeping the clean sheet. Belkatir, right, I don't know why he was running around holding his head. He wanted a Libyan red card. Spent five minutes on the floor for saying he got kicked in the head. I think it was probably accidental, but we nearly conceded. Libya hit the post just after that, that incident. Of course, we have got VAR at every single game in this competition. VAR was in use tonight. It was used to check a couple of things. Right at the end, the Libyans got a free kick in the 98th minute. There was only six minutes added, so I don't know how they come to that conclusion. And even then, after the free kick got blocked by the wall, VAR did a quick check to see if it was a handball, trying to give Libya a penalty in the 100th minute. So that doesn't surprise me. Keep it on VAR in this tournament as the competition progresses. But we did get a goal. In terms of the attacking players, I like Mazian. He did well in the first half. He's very quick. He did a good run, but he should have shot quicker. In the end, he took too long to shoot and got tackled. But I like Mazian. He was one of my favourite players to watch. The midfield I particularly enjoyed. I liked Kendusi and I liked Marizig. Those two boys in the midfield, in the middle, I think could do a job, maybe, but I've got to see more of them, to be honest. And um, Mahios up top, of course, won the penalty, scored the penalty, call penalty, sent the goalkeeper the wrong way, um, put a penalty to the left, keeper went to the right. And I have to say, 
if they didn't give that, I'm sure VAR would have. So VAR should be helping us here. Um, but good for Matt Hills. Of course, after he scored, he came off injured, which is a concern going forward. We hope it's nothing too serious, inshallah, because when Matt Hills came off, our attacking threat started to dip. But it is a very big pitch. Also, when Mezien wasn't, wasn't really involved in the game, um, the attack seemed to weaken. So Matt Hills comes off. On comes Karim Aribi. Now, how can Aribi start for, for Belmadi and play with bloody side Benrahma and all them? And then you don't even start in this team. When I mean, the guy's a joke, he come on and he would have do. He got booked. He come on for a yellow and popped off. Honestly. Now, if Matt Hills is injured, we're going to be stuck with Karim Aribi up front. I hope he proves me wrong because I'm not seeing too much in two different sides at the moment under two managers. And um, and Dabih came on for uh, Lahmeri. But Lahmeri didn't really do anything for me either. I wasn't too impressed with him. He's got to improve. Um, De Bich came on and then he also went off. So those subs didn't really impact the game as much as Majid Bouguera would have liked. He can make five subs. Um, I think he only chose to make two in the opening 90 minutes. So let's see how we progress. We've got the clean sheet. We've got the 1-0 win. That gives us the three points. And um, it's on to Ethiopia next. Three points is good, but we're going to have to get at least another win to qualify. I'm sure Algeria are expected to win this group. But really, I'm really impressed by the stadium. The performance as a whole wasn't top class but it's a performance to build on to get better from you've laid some foundations you've played in that stadium you're going to get more used to it the more and more you play there and i think going forwards um bulgaria will be looking to to try and seriously win win this competition tougher test to come of course libya put on a good game like i said they went close they hit the post but um there is tougher test to to come so algeria won libya neil let me know your thoughts on the game in the comment section down below thank you so much for watching subscribe for more I'll see you next time.